and welcome to part two where I give Rebecca Watson the attention she craves. Of course, this will no doubt be used as Exhibit A in a claim that now I'm an obsessive cyberstalker. Apparently, there's only two acceptable ways to deal with the massive output of bullshit from Atheism Plus, Freethought Blogs, and Skeptic International. That is, blindly agree with their bullshit without question, or give their bullshit a pass and not deal with it at all. I'm sure they dream of a safe space encompassing the known universe where that'll actually happen. But in truth, their bullshit is rippling out from the earth at the speed of light, and as soon as it hits intelligent life, the big-headed anal probers are sending out a fleet to deal with their bullshit. And they can't get here soon enough. Now, where were we? So what I learned from that was that I can't rely upon the leaders of our movement to care or to actually take action to help. So you can't trust the cops. You can't trust people to believe your story. You can't trust the people who hang out with you at these events. You can't trust the leaders of our community to give a damn. I try to keep it light and lousy, but to understand that doing these things takes a lot of time and it's entirely possible for me to end up staring at the same clips for what seems like hours at a time, which is my circuitous way of saying I've spent far too much time looking at this pie-faced con artist. I'm convinced there's some poor Afghan cab driver in Gitmo forced to watch one of Rebecca Watson's videos on a continuous loop, and all he can do to have the slightest glimmer of hope is to pray for the sweet release of death. Now, the last part of Rebecca's keynote speech here, you heard about how she was unable to prevent a guy who does Elevator Gate, which is, as you can imagine, critical of Rebecca Watson from attending a conference that she also planned to attend, and how her friends, fellow skeptics, minions, drinking buddies, and fellatio mime artists, whatever you want to call them, got him fired from his job. Not for being critical of her, of course, but because of an unambiguous threat she claims he made. Elsewhere in the speech, Watson explains her technique, which is to provoke someone, block them, and let her followers harass them. And I assume get some more good yet non-actionable bits of exasperated nastiness for her page of hate. Of course, she doesn't quite characterize it that way. Now, the remainder of her speech, Watson elaborates on patriarchy theory, which like other forms of totalizing bullshit that explains everything, not only when anything happens, but when its opposite happens and includes such diverse things as Freudian psychoanalysis, the Illuminati, the Elders of Zion, and any number of paranoid conspiracy theories. That isn't all that interesting to me. But it runs like this. If a woman calls another woman a slut, it's because of patriarchy. Men not only rape, but rape with gusto because of patriarchy. The milk goes sour? Patriarchy. The cat coughs up a hairball? Patriarchy. We discover a cure for cancer? Ha! Tricked you there. Nothing good comes from the patriarchy. And fuck you for thinking it does, you fallow centric oppressive prick. So I'm not going to cover that. Instead, I want you to pay attention to Watson's rationale for listening to anything she has to say, which is pity. Now, some people have claimed that Watson displays sociopathic tendencies. I'm not a psychiatrist, but as a satirist, I do have expertise in virtually everything. And in Dr. Martha Stout's book, The Sociopath Next Door, she paints a chilling and often counterintuitive portrait of sociopaths in that the hallmark of the cornered sociopath isn't fear or contrition, which they are incapable of anyway but how they immediately appeal to pity. You catch a sociopath with their hand in the cookie jar and their go-to response will be to tear up and act hurt. Just personally hurt that you would think they were stealing cookies. And the thing about that form of manipulation is that the sociopath enjoys it just as much as any other manipulation they engage in. As they are free from conscience and incapable of other joys, their one pleasure is the game. Manipulation, backstabbing, having others do their bidding, and really, 
just watching the world burn. Also, sociopaths lie a lot. So listen to Rebecca Watson's next tale of harassment because I know a little something about it. PZ actually alerted me to the fact that there was a person on a forum that was dedicated to hating me. And she was saying that she planned to attend the event in San Francisco and that she planned to approach me and accost me in some way. Uh, I just forwarded the information to the event organizer and they immediately took her name off the wait list. So, what's wrong with this narrative? First, the forum she's referring to in her usual vague, so you can't check it kind of way, is the slime pit, which does occasionally mention Rebecca Watson within the larger context of Atheism Plus, Free Thought Blogs, why PZ Myers has the most potential as a potential rapist, and what's the best way to get rid of tenacious leeches off the ass of your atheist and skeptical community. However, to say the forum is dedicated to hating Rebecca Watson is like claiming the entire purpose of Talk Origins is to piss off Ray Comfort. Apparently, the slime pit is PZ Myers' home away from home. He likes to spend a lot of time hiding under the bed and eavesdropping, and people pretend to not know he's hiding under the bed and jump up and down on it innocently and leave box spring-shaped bruises on the back of his head. Second, this person didn't direct any communication at Rebecca Watson. She posted on the slime pit and she wrote, regarding little girl Becky, of course I'm going to ignore her. I also plan on smirking and walking away when she opens her mouth. So, down the rabbit hole where Rebecca Watson lives, ignoring her is considered to be some sort of confrontation and also the basis for her to try to get people banned from skeptical events and also hand the organizers a starlet's laundry list of demands, including who's allowed to be near her and who can address her. This person did attend the event. The organizers, apparently sick to death of Rebecca Watson, but not quite ready to drop a pair of balls big enough to tell her to fuck off, provided a name badge with a pseudonym to this person. You see, the organizers weren't interested in protecting Rebecca Watson from this person. They were interested in protecting this person from Rebecca Watson. And how do I know this? Well. First, forum posts are a matter of public record, at least on forums that aren't in the habit of dropping things down the memory hole. Here's a pro tip. It's unethical to lie about posts on forums whose content you can control and can delete and edit at will. However, lying about forum posts in a forum you don't control? Well, that's just fucking stupid. Also, I have the emails. You see, when you're like me, who has no agenda save for being an atheist and skeptic, who isn't trying to raise money or sell t-shirts or work some lucrative con, and more importantly, brings the lulls, people send you stuff. You'd be amazed at some of the stuff I've got in my inbox. Or terrified. Your mileage may vary. And here's a late-breaking item. Rebecca Watson, in a desperate attempt to shore up the claims of hate and threats she has been making for years, keeps adding to her page of hate. Of course, if there are any rape or death threats in there, they're totally swamped by comments which can be considered to be critical or mocking or just stupid. And now, Rebecca Watson added this comment of mine. As the rape threats have never been produced and are limited, it seems, to anonymous comments by trolls and others who you can't know are part of the atheist community, or even if they occurred, you're jumping the gun. As an atheist skeptic, your first job is to determine if a problem actually exists or are the inventions of a self-promoting sociopath repeated by mindless ideologues. Which is funny because Rebecca claims the page of hate or comments that are directed, as in 
sent to her. The reality seems to be that Rebecca Watson and her hungover flying monkeys are scouring YouTube for any comment that mentions her in an unfavorable light. They're hoping the sheer volume of comments will distract from the fact that very few of them, as in none of them, are direct threats of rape, murder, or even so much as giving her the stink eye. And the less savory comments are obviously the work of the kind of dumb fucks and hyperactive, semi-literate 12-year-olds you'll find on YouTube. The fact is, I've never directed a comment at Rebecca Watson, ever. You notice that in this comment, I am talking about her and not to her. That's because I consider any discussion with the likes of her and with how she handles criticism by parlaying them into accusations to be utterly pointless and a waste of time at best. Now that doesn't mean, however, she's going to get a free pass to continue to take a hot steaming dump on the atheist and skeptical community. Also, I suspect that Rebecca Watson is trying to be clever here. If, as I maintain, the comments she thinks are threats or just trolling, then the fact that I now appear on the page of hate must mean I'm a troll. Of course, she also dumped my comment in with racist and anti-Semitic comments, even though one of these things doesn't belong. I guess she saw my video pointing out the subtextual racism in people like her and Amanda Marcotte, and this is tit for tat. Incidentally, tit for tat is an expression. It is not a reference to boobs. Not even Jen McCright's knockers of science. But you also notice something. The point of my comment on the video of her keynote speech was to ask for evidence to dismiss the poor excuse for evidence she has provided, and to determine if there is a problem in the atheist and skeptical community, and not incidentally, exactly what is wrong with her. In other words, what does Rebecca Watson consider to be hating on her? That's right, doing what skeptics do. And on that note, my friends actually got him fired from his freelance writing job. They immediately took her name off the waitlist. Silenced by any means necessary. Silenced by any means necessary. In accordance with the principles of doublethink, it does not matter if the war is not real, or when it is, victory is not possible. The war is not meant to be won, it is meant to be continuous. Somebody asked me on the week, over the weekend, who said we needed atheist activism or an atheist movement? And the answer to that is, some atheists, maybe not you. Um, nobody's requiring anybody to uh, participate. You can sit around and enjoy the benefits of those who are doing it. We understand not everybody can be out, not everybody wants to be out. Uh, not everybody can be an activist or wants to be. Doesn't mean you're a bad person.